Hi everyone, my name is Matthew Kudo and I'm the Communications Coordinator at TechSoup Canada. And I'd like to welcome and thank you all for joining us for today's webinar on Tableau Software. We're going to be learning about how data visualization can empower your nonprofit. Uh, just before we get it started though, I'd like to quickly introduce you to TechSoup Canada. Our mission here is to help nonprofits use technology effectively, and we accomplish this in two ways. The first is to make technology products more affordable through our technology donations program. So we partner with corporations like Microsoft, Adobe, Symantec, and we offer their products as either an outright donation or at a significant discount for charities, nonprofits, and libraries across Canada. So for example, if you wanted a copy of Microsoft Office Professional, you can expect to purchase it for around $500 online or in-store. However, if you're a TechSoup Canada member and you qualify for our Microsoft Donations program, you can get Office Pro for only $55. As you can imagine, the cost savings can become quite significant, especially if you're purchasing software for your entire staff team. Creating a TechSoup Canada account is free, so if you'd like to get more information, please visit our website at TechSoupCanada.ca. And the second way we try to help nonprofits use technology effectively is by creating and curating nonprofit tech resources. We write blogs, curate content on social media, and we host events and webinars like this one to help nonprofits learn more about the technologies that can help them in their day-to-day -day work. So if there's ever a topic that you'd like to learn more about, just let us know. We're always open and delighted to get feedback from our members about what topics are important to them. As well, just to touch on, TechSoup Canada is also part of CSI, the Centre for Social Innovation, which is a co-working space, community launch pad for people who are changing the world. And we're also part of what's called the TechSoup Global Network. So we're the Canadian branch of many different partners around the world, Italy, Japan, um, who are also TechSoup partners and helping nonprofits in their countries. Um, and just for a few logistics, um, for today's webinar, you can go use the GoToWebinar panel on your right-hand side to change your audio settings, enter any questions you may have, or chat with us at any time. At the end of the webinar presentation, we're going to have a formal Q&A session where I'm going to ask questions to the speaker, Chad, on your behalf. Just a reminder that you are going to be on mute during this webinar, so if you have any questions or concerns, just uh, chat to us in the question box. And also note that this webinar is being recorded, so we will be uploading the video on our website shortly and sending it off to our members. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today. So Chad Skelton is a consultant and trainer based in Vancouver. Uh, Chad has worked as a data journalist at the Vica uh, Vancouver Sun until 2015, and during that time, he received the Jack Webster Award, which is BC's top journalism prize, six times, most recently in 2013 for a series he did on political donations and lobbyists. In 2014, he also won an International Data Journalism Award for his portfolio of work in that previous year. Chad also teaches at the Kwantlen Polytechnical University in data visualization, among other journalism courses. He's given several talks on data and storytelling, and he works as a consultant and trainer in data visualization with Tableau Software. So we're very, very pleased to have Chad with us today to demonstrate how data visualization can empower your nonprofit. So without any further ado, I'm going to pass the presentation over to Chad. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me OK. Uh, so uh, Matt already introduced me. Uh, if you want to know more about me, uh, my website is chadskelton.com. Uh, and I thought I would just talk uh, a little bit, first of all. Um, oh, sorry, actually, you can't see my, there we go. Now you can hopefully see me as well. Um, uh, so I just want to talk briefly about sort of uh, how we got to here and what I'm hoping to show you today, um, and then I'll jump right into it. Most of what I'm going to be showing you today uh, is not slides and stuff. We're just going to jump right into uh, Tableau software, and I'm going to show you some of what it can do. Um, so as, as Matt mentioned, I'm, my background is as a data journalist. I did a lot of work in Tableau. I'm now a Tableau trainer uh, and consultant. Um, and I do uh, workshops in Tableau. Um, and uh, I know a number of people in the nonprofit sector, and they would often be talking to me about their kind of uh, data pain points, about how they would be trying to share data with funders or analyze data on clients, and they'd be doing it in Excel, and they'd be banging their head against a wall, and it was just really hard to get things to work the way they wanted to, and it was really painful to sort of analyze data in any real depth. Uh, and because I've got this sort of background in Tableau, I'd be like, well, why don't you get Tableau? It's so much easier in Tableau. You can do all these cool things in Tableau. And they'd say, well, that's great if you've got a spare 
two thousand dollars that you can lend me, and we can get Tableau for um, our nonprofit. Uh, and that is one of the real downsides until recently about Tableau is it is an expensive product. It's powerful, but it's not cheap. Uh, and then just about a year ago, I sort of stumbled across um, this, which is uh, the Tableau Foundation. Uh, which actually, uh, with some restrictions, you have to be sort of a, a smaller nonprofit under $5 million, and um, you can't be a healthcare organization in a university. Uh, but essentially, uh, if you fall under these qualifications, you can get uh, the Tableau desktop, the full sort of powerful version of Tableau, which normally costs uh, $2,000 US. Uh, you can get it through TechSoup for an admin fee of just uh, 80 bucks. And so all of a sudden, this uh, software that's be, been very expensive and sort of out of the reach of nonprofits now, I think, probably is uh, affordable. And so I tried to sort of tell everyone that I knew in the nonprofit sector about this, hey, you can finally get Tableau, you know, it's going to make your life so much easier. I tweeted about it, but I only know so many people in the nonprofit sector, so I got in touch with TechSoup, uh, and then we decided to do uh, this webinar. So one big sort of caveat about this uh, training session, so as I mentioned, I do these uh, training workshops in Tableau, they're typically two full days. Uh, we have now about 35 minutes left, <laughs> so obviously I'm not going to be able to cover um, everything that I cover in my two-day training, so this isn't going to tell you everything you could possibly know about how to use Tableau, um, but I'm hoping that what I can do is give you a bit of a flavor for what's possible uh, with Tableau and specifically how it can be used um, for nonprofits, and then I'll, I'll answer your questions uh, at the end. So uh, in wanting to sort of show you what Tableau can do, I, we wanted to get a data set that would sort of be relevant uh, to the type of work that nonprofits did, and it occurred to me that a, a really relevant um, data set would be one on um, donors to a charity. Um, but perhaps not surprisingly, it's hard to get a charity to just hand over all the private um, proprietary data on their donors, and so uh, that was a bit of a challenge, but thankfully, uh, Joyce with TechSoup spent, I think she said four hours, this is how much she likes you guys, uh, to build this totally awesome uh, fake data set of donors. So this is uh, 5,000 rows long. Um, you've got uh, the name of each donor, um, their organization, their address, what city they're in, what province they're in, their postal code, their email address, how much money they gave, uh, and when they made the donation. Okay, and so this is probably quite typical of the type of data you might have uh, on your donors. You might have a different type of data set if um, your data set is on a client base. Um, but often you have like this huge data set like this and you're trying to sort of answer some questions, right? You're trying to figure out, um, you know, where are most of our donors living? What time of year do they give the most donations? Um, in, in hopes of sort of being able to better perhaps target your marketing, like, okay, we know these postal code areas uh, are really hot. Uh, with our donor base and so we can try to sort of send more mailers at this time of year because that's when they seem to really make their donations. Um, so I'm going to show you how you would sort of do that analysis in Tableau and hopefully sort of answer some of the questions that you might have uh, about donor data, but, but what we're going to show you would be equally applicable to client data or uh, administrative data. Um, so we'll just fire up Tableau here. So this is Tableau Desktop. This is the, the paid version of Tableau. Um, when it launches, you have your sort of opening slash screen uh, where you have a choice of connecting to data. Today, we're just going to be connecting to Excel files, um, but you'll notice down here that you can actually um, connect to a whole bunch of different database servers. You can connect to uh, Google Sheets. Uh, so basically, wherever your data is, Tableau Desktop is able to sort of connect to it, pull it in, and it can actually pull in from a variety of different uh, data sources at once and work with them uh, simultaneously. Uh, but we're going to load up an Excel file here. So we'll find that dummy data. Uh, and here we go, you'll see this is the sort of um, the data import window you sort of see down here at the bottom. This looks very similar to the spreadsheet we were looking at before. You can sort of look and make sure that Tableau is importing your data properly. As long as it is, you just go to your first worksheet. Uh, and this right here is uh, the Tableau workspace. And we're going to get going pretty quickly about sort of how you analyze your data and visualize your data in Tableau. But I wanted to kind of give you guys a bit of a sense of the lay of the land um, in Tableau and how it works. Uh, if some of you have ever used uh, Excel pivot tables, this should look a little bit um, familiar. Uh, Tableau is actually, one of its founders once said it's, it's visual pivot tables. Uh, and so you sort of have this, the, the fields of your data over here and then you drop them over here in columns and rows. Um, and the big difference with Tableau is instead of seeing a table of data, which is what you would see in a pivot table if you're working in Excel, uh, you see charts. Um, and that's really the power of uh, Tableau. Um, when people often think about Tableau, certainly in a data journalism context, often in a corporate or nonprofit context, they often think about um, their external audience, like how are we going to make pretty pictures, cool interactive maps, cool interactive charts um, for our funders, for our stakeholders, for other people. Um, but I actually think one of the most powerful things about Tableau is what it can do for your own 
uh, analysis. And I certainly found that myself um, over my career as a data journalist. I started using things like pivot tables and Excel to analyze my data. Um, but it's amazing when you start to interrogate your data, not with tables, but visually with bar charts and line charts and things like that, you start to see patterns in your data um, that you wouldn't have seen before. And you see them a lot, a lot more quickly. I mean, the whole reason we visualize data for external audiences is because that you can see things visually a lot more quickly than you can by looking at a table of you know two dozen numbers that applies to you as well and so by by doing your analysis visually you start to see things really quickly in your data you're able to kind of pivot to other things and say okay well let's dig into this a little bit further and it makes the sort of analysis process uh, a lot quicker and then the nice thing is because Tableau also is this presentation tool once you've done that analysis for yourself uh, it's just a couple of steps to then share that uh, with other people okay so this is the lay of the land here um, the first thing you might notice here on the left hand side is you've got Instead of just a list of all the fields or columns in your data, Tableau has broken it into two broad categories. One is called dimensions and the other is called measures. And this is really central to how Tableau thinks about your data. Um, essentially, measures are things that you can add up, that you could calculate an average for, that you can calculate a median for. For lack of a better term, they're basically all numbers of some sort. So you'll see here down at the bottom, gift amount is being treated as a measure. Uh, dimensions, on the other hand, are things that describe your data. Okay, so it would be the name of a donor, uh, the province where the donor is located, their postal code, uh, what date the donation was made. Uh, and those are all up here at the top. And you can also see based on the icons here that dimensions are also broken into different categories. So um, if it's got an ABC beside it, that means it's a string field, so it's just a, a text of some sort. If it's got a little globe beside it, that means it's a geographic field. And Tableau has some pretty powerful uh, mapping functionality within it. And then if it's got a little calendar icon beside it, like donation date, it means that Tableau has recognized that uh, as a date and you can do uh, time series analysis on it. Okay, um, one thing with um, this dimensions and measures is that Tableau basically assumes that anything that's a number is a measure, but sometimes uh, that's not true. In this case, we have a tax receipt number. The tax receipt number is not really a number like the amount of money that someone would have given uh, to your charity. It's an identification code. In a case like that where something is put into measures where it should really be in dimensions or vice versa, it's just simply a matter of taking it and dragging it up where it belongs and you're good to go. Uh, one other thing I'll just note is that Tableau will also always create um, uh, a column in your data called number of records and that, as its name suggests, is just the number of rows uh, in your data. So if what you're doing is sort of adding up the number of times something happened, like maybe you've got some client data and every row is uh, an interaction that a client had with your organization, you'd be using number of records um, as opposed to in this case we're going to be using often gift amounts where I want to add up all the donations uh, that people have made. Okay, so what are the kinds of questions that we could ask uh, of our data? Oh, sorry, first of all, I mentioned that the dragging, um, there's a couple of places that you would drag things here. Uh, there's columns and rows, and this is very similar to uh, pivot tables. Um, I personally don't like the terminology that Tableau uses here in columns and rows. If you're used to sort of chart terminology, this is sort of like the x-axis or the y-axis. It's basically are you pulling things to the bottom of a chart or are you pulling them uh, to the side. Uh, you then have what's called the marks card here. So you've got colors, size, text, details, tooltip, and you can also pull dimensions and measures into there, and that'll change the color coding uh, of a chart. It'll change the size of bubbles or elements on your chart. Uh, and tooltip is when you hover over elements of your chart, it's something that pops up. You can put certain dimensions in your tooltip or measures in your tooltip that may not appear elsewhere in your chart. And then we also have a filters box. If you want to filter your data, you just want to look at data for Ontario or Quebec, you could pull province uh, into filters and just select the, pro the uh, provinces that you want. There's also this pages filter. We're not going to deal with that today. That's sort of when you want to do sort of basically an animation, sort of like what you might have seen Hans Rosling do, where you're going from sort of step to step and you're walking um, your users through uh, a certain data story. Okay, so I always think the best place to start with data analysis instead of sort of thinking what is the pretty chart uh, that I want to make is what is the question that I want to know the answer to. Okay, so uh, one really basic question that we could start with is who are our biggest donors, right? Who are they? How much money have they given to our charity? Okay, so we can find uh, the full name of our donor over here. We just grab that, pull it over to rows, and we have a list of all of our donors, right, down here. And we want to know who gave the most money, so we can take gift amount, pull that over to columns, and then we sort it from biggest to smallest up here with the bar. I always find this is a really helpful icon because it basically looks exactly uh, like the chart that you want to create, big bar to small bar. And we see that our biggest donor is Heather Gilligan, and she gave, she's a really good donor, she gave almost a million dollars. Uh, to your charity. 
Um, I find it's often really helpful when you're looking at charts like this to actually see the number at the end of the bar so you don't have to constantly sort of refer down to the axis. That's super easy to do in Tableau. You just click on this little T box right here which says show mark labels. You click it and then you have the actual amount at the end of every bar. Uh, you also have a lot of control in Tableau and we're not going to have time to get into all of it uh, today over formatting. So basically anything about how something looks in Tableau, the fonts, the colors, um, whether something is formatted as a currency, formatted as a percentage, you have complete control over. In this case, um, because gift amount is dollars, we probably want to format that as a currency. So we can right click on gift amount, go to default properties, number format, and we'll change it to a currency with no decimal places. And there we go, we got our first chart in Tableau showing our biggest donors uh, across the whole country. By default in Tableau, much like in Excel, when you create new charts, you're creating them in sheets and it just calls them sheet one, sheet two, sheet three. Um, that can get a bit confusing though as your, as your data visualizations become more intricate, more advanced. Uh, so I always find it's helpful to rename this something that they actually are. So I would rename this sheet top donors. Okay, so there are top donors, Heather Gilligan, Darlene Hamilton, Christina Sham. Okay, so what else could we ask? We could sort of say where are our donors located, right? What province do they come from? So in that case, we can take province, pull it up over to rows, and again we'll take gift amount, pull that over to columns, and we see, perhaps not surprisingly, that Ontario, uh, BC, and Quebec are the largest source of, our source of our donors. Again, we can see by clicking on labels that Ontario donors gave about $100 million, British Columbia donors $14 million, uh, Quebec $10.2 million. Now that's not all that surprising because those are the biggest provinces. If you had another data set, uh, that had uh, provinces populations, you could combine that uh, with this data set, link them together, and you could come up with a per capita uh, rate of donation. So you could sort of see, okay, even you know, on these coast provinces maybe don't have uh, big populations, but for their, the size of their populations, they're actually giving quite a lot. Uh, the other thing is when you pull a measure into Tableau, by default you'll see here it says sum gift amount. It sums up um, all the donations in your data, so it's adding them up, but you can actually change that to something else. So if I right click on here, Instead of looking at sum, I could look at what's the average donation. And you can see here that you know, Ontario is still number one at 38,000, but Prince Edward Island actually has a pretty high average donation. And you can see here that the axis automatically changes to average gift amount from gift amount. Uh, and you can also look at things, you can see here, you can look at things like percentiles, uh, medians. Um, it's got, you've got a lot of choice over how your data is presented. Okay, so again, we'll rename this one by province. Um, and that's pretty specific, that gives us a sense of like which uh, province is giving us uh, the most in donations, but obviously within these provinces, Canada is a very urban country. Um, there's probably more donations in some areas of the province than others, and, and in terms of marketing and mail outs and things like that, we might want to know that. Uh, one of the really cool things about Tableau as of about a year and a half ago is it uh, has built in support for uh, postal code areas. So if you look at uh, our data, and you can always view your data by clicking on this view data button here, um, you'll see our postal codes are in our data here. Um, some of you probably already know this, but the first three digits of any postal code are referred to as a forward sortation area, uh, and that actually refers to a specific geographic place uh, within the country. Uh, and so if you have postal codes, you can quite easily within uh, Excel or actually within Tableau itself just hive off the first three characters of it, and then you can use that geographic code, that FSA, uh, to map uh, your data down to specific postal code areas and get a real uh, detailed sense of the geography. Um, of where uh, your donors are located, and I'll show you how that works. So create a new sheet, and we will look at our postal code, uh, and there's a little show me button here, uh, which actually allows you to very quickly create different types of visualizations. Instead of dragging and dropping them, you can use this. Uh, and you actually have a couple of options. You can do what's called a shape map, so that will show you the shapes uh, of postal code areas in the entire country. Um, or you can create a dot map, which will just look, it'll place dots in the center of each of those postal code areas. Now, this, as it is right now, is not a particularly helpful map, because all it's doing is placing a single dot uh, on each one of these postal code areas, and it's not really communicating very much. But this is where the marks card for Tableau becomes very powerful, because what we want to be able to visualize is which postal code areas within uh, Canada are giving us the most money, where do we want to maybe focus um, more of our mailings and marketing and things like that. Uh, and so what we want to know is we want to know uh, which postal code areas have the most uh, donations, and so that is gift amount. And instead of pulling this over to columns and rows, we can pull it over to the marks card, we can pull it over to size and say basically to Tableau, size those dots by the amount of money that's coming in from those postal code areas. 
And all of a sudden now we do get a much more rich portrait of where the donations are um, in the country. And you can see, again, not surprisingly, we have a lot in southern Ontario, a lot in the Vancouver area, sort of around um, Edmonton and Calgary. Um, you might want to know what's going on up here in northern Manitoba. They seem to like this charity quite a bit. Um, and we'll rename this one by postal code. Okay. Um, you can also use the marks card to add um, analysis in different ways. So right now uh, we're encoding, to use a data visualization term, the size of the donation by the length of the bar, but all of our bars look identical, right? They're all just blue bars, right? So it might be helpful in looking at our data to say, okay, you know, like when I look at the list of top donors, um, I might want to have a bit of a sense of which province they come from. So in that case, we just go to our top donors, take province and pull it over to color, and then all of a sudden our list of donors is color-coded by province, right? Alberta is dark blue, British Columbia is light blue. Um, and you have complete control within Tableau about what colors are chosen. So it just automatically assigns colors, but you can double click on any one of these colors. And if you sort of decide, you know, I think British Columbia should be this sort of shade of purple, uh, or if you want to get really specific, you can actually double click on these colors and you can assign specific uh, hex codes or choose a specific color from the rainbow of your, co your um, laptop's color picker. Okay, so looking at this, we can see the vast majority of our biggest donors are Ontario, but we've also got this big one in Saskatchewan, this Laura Agopian, and then as we scroll down, we see a couple of big donors from Quebec, you know, one from BC, et cetera, et cetera. You can do the exact same thing with the postal code map, just to, I mean, this might even just be aesthetics to make it a little bit prettier, pull province over to color, and all of a sudden your map uh, is color coded by province. And what's nice about um, Tableau is once you're within a workbook, once you start assigning colors, Tableau remembers those colors in every other sheet, right? So the purple that I assigned to British Columbia, uh, it remembers that and it puts that, that here, okay? Um, and again, then just for consistency, we might also want to pull um, province over to color here just so that, you know, when you're looking at this, you remember, oh yeah, Ontario is this shade of, of blue, back here the shade of blue, here the shade of blue, or sort of a bluish green, okay? Um, one other thing that we could uh, ask our data is uh, when do people uh, give money to our charity, right? We can use that because we have the donation date here in our data. So we'll create a new sheet. In this case, we'll pull donation date down to columns, and we'll pull gift amount over to rows, and that gives us an automatic line chart, which shows us uh, when donations were given to our charity. Um, by default, uh, Tableau will always show you by data by year because that's what people are most likely to want to look at. Um, but in this case, that's not a particularly helpful view. Um, Perhaps our charity was sort of in a dormant mode for much of this period, and then all of a sudden people really started giving money to our charity in 2013. This tells us something, but it doesn't really tell us a whole lot. Uh, maybe instead we'd like to get a seasonal picture for when people are donating to our charity, because again, if we're going to send out those mail-outs to particular postal code areas, you know, people really give a lot um, one part of the year, we might want to make sure that we send them that mail-out in that part of the year uh, to really maximize our return. Anytime you have a date format, uh, you have really sort of fine-grained control over how that date is visualized in Tableau. So we can click here on year donation, and you'll see that you know we can show the data by year, but we can either also show it by quarter, by month, by day, uh, by week number, by weekday. If you have a field that has date and time, you can also show data by hour, by the minute. Uh, in our case, we're gonna look at the data by month, so we get a bit of a sense of the seasonal picture of our donors, so we'll click on month. Uh, and we can see, perhaps surprisingly, I would've thought most charities would have a lot of donations in December, but we get a whole lot of them um, in April, okay? Uh, and you can also look at data side by side. So this shows us the amount of donations that we're receiving um, and what month the donation is being received in, um, but it's by the amount of donations. So it's quite possible we just have one donor that's giving us you know, $40 million in April and that's totally skewing the whole chart. So maybe what we would want to look at instead is side by side with the amount of the donation, uh, the number of donations. So that would be the number of records. Uh, to do that side by side analysis, we just pull number of records up here beside gift amount. Uh, and we can see that that's a much flatter picture, right? So that's something that would be worth keeping in mind when you're doing your analysis is like, okay, actually the donations are coming in pretty steady and if anything, they kind of spike in October or November. It's just that the amount of donations really spiked in April because we perhaps got, you know, one or two big donors. So, And then if you want to get rid of that analysis, you just pull the pill off of Tableau. Okay, and we'll call this by date. Okay, so we've got our top donors, donors by province, donors by postal code, donors by date. Okay, and already hopefully you're getting a bit of a sense of how quickly and easily you can analyze your data in Tableau and you can see these patterns and you see one pattern that looks a little bit sketchy, you maybe want to um, analyze it in a little bit more detail. You can just do that very quickly by pulling things on the pill, off the pill, onto the marks card, off the marks card. You have a whole lot of fine grain control. 
Um, but we haven't even gotten to the real power of Tableau, which is interactivity, right? That these that Tableau does not create, like Excel does, a series of static charts. Uh, it creates interactive charts that can interact with each other to allow for really powerful analysis. And also for something which is pretty cool, which is that you can create an analytical dashboard, which you can then send to someone who maybe doesn't know how to use Tableau, but they can figure out how to click on things um, and answer more questions about their data. So I'm going to show you how that works. So far, we've been creating new sheets down here uh, at the bottom of Tableau. But the bar right beside it is uh, for a new dashboard, and we're going to do that now. We're going to create a new dashboard. Uh, this one on the right-hand side, we're not going to have time for it today, but just so you know it exists. There's also something in Tableau called Stories, and that's more when you have a specific story you want to tell about your data in sequence. Um, that's what uh, Stories are for. But we're going to create dashboards. It's probably the most common thing you create in Tableau. So we create a new dashboard, and this is the dashboard screen. Uh, and you can see it's quite different. So here when we were creating sheets, we had access to all of our data on the left-hand side. And by pulling that data into the marks card, into columns and rows and filters, we create a chart. Right? Um, with dashboards, uh, you no longer have access to your data. What you have access to are your sheets. And you create your dashboard um, based on those sheets. Okay? So the first thing is to decide how big our dashboard should be. Um, and this really depends on, on your audience. In our case, we'll create it for a laptop browser screen. Uh, you can also manually change the height and width here. So uh, we can actually make this a little bit bigger. Why don't we make it 900 wide and 700 high? Maybe a little bit less than that, so it's all on the screen. 650, perhaps. OK, perfect. OK, and then we just start by pulling our sheets into our dashboard. OK, so we're going to start with our province chart. So I pull province over here. And you can see as I'm pulling it over, um, the dashboard grays out. So you can sort of see where I'm going to drop it. In this case, we're just dropping one sheet. So uh, it's just one big gray box. But as we pull more in, you'll see there's more choice about where things are going to land. So I drop that in there. Automatically, it brings the color legend uh, along with the chart. Um, but in this case, the color legend is kind of redundant, right? Because this says British Columbia purple. We don't really need a legend here that says, oh, yeah, British Columbia is purple. So uh, anything we want to get rid of on our dashboard, we just click on here. Click X, remove. Uh, now we can take our top donors. We'll pull that over. Now you're getting a bit of a sense, right? Do I want it to be at the bottom of my dashboard, top of my dashboard, to the left of by province, or to the right of by province? I'm going to put it to the right of by province. Again, we get the color legend. I can get rid of that. OK. We'll now look at data by postal code. Put that down here. And again, we're getting both a color legend in this case, which we can get rid of because the information is here in this bar chart. Uh, and we're getting a size legend. I find this, personally, the size legends are kind of redundant. It's pretty obvious when you're looking at uh, dots on a map that bigger means more. And you can always hover over these specific dots to get the exact amount of money that was donated in those postal code areas. So we're just going to click that off. And then we'll pull date over here. OK, so this is our first dashboard. In one view, we have which province uh, is donating the most money to our charity, which donors are donating the most to our charity, uh, which postal code areas are donating the most to our charity, uh, and which date, uh, when, what, what time of year are people giving the most money to our charity. Um, I mentioned before about styling uh, your chart. This is a little bit awkward, right? I, there's one of the things I often tell my students is, as a general rule, if to read your chart, someone has to manually like kick tilt their head like this, it's a bad chart. <laughs> so uh, we can change this quite easily by just right clicking on one of the months, clicking on format, and saying instead of using the full month, just use the first letter. Okay, and that's a little bit cleaner. Okay. So right now this isn't so great, right? This is this is this is nice to have it all in one view instead of having to click on each individual one. Um, but it's still just for charts showing different information, right? And you can scroll down each one, and you can look at things, and you can zoom in on the map. Um, but the real power of Tableau is the ability to have charts interact with each other through filtering, OK? And this is really easy. Um, so what you just do is you click on the province chart here, and you say, I want to use uh, province as a filter. And you do that. If you look at the top right-hand corner, these are very tiny icons, which is sometimes a little bit hard to hit with your mouse. But you'll see the one in the middle there says, use as filter. We just click that. OK, it looks like nothing's happened yet. But now this chart, this uh, provincial chart, will filter all the other charts. Okay, So as I look at this and I say, hey, okay, Ontario is the biggest in donors, but I live in BC. I'm curious about BC donors. I just click on BC, and all of a sudden my top donors is filtered to BC. So I can see that Joe Mortify is my top BC donor at about a half a million dollars. Our postal code map uh, is filtered to BC, right? So I can see you know, which areas. And surprisingly, there's a lot of donors in the Kootenai area, not maybe so much in the Lower Mainland. Um, and our donations by date has now been filtered to just BC. So our BC donors give sort of in April and May. I want to look at Quebec. I see Quebec. I want to look at Ontario. 
I see Ontario. And here's an interesting one I was noticing when I was going through this data. You click on Alberta and it's a bit weird, right? Uh, there seem to be these Alberta postal codes out here in Ontario and Quebec and BC. Um, this is actually not a bad thing. One of the cool things about uh, Tableau is in visualizing your data, um, it both gives you more insight into your data more quickly, uh, but it also makes it a lot easier to spot the errors in your data, right? So obviously in, in the way in which these donations have been coded, um, every now and then, and it's not a lot, this is why these, do these dots are so small, these are probably just individual dots, um, a BC postal code, an Ontario postal code, a Quebec postal code got accidentally um, classified as an Alberta postal code, right? So in that list of our data, if you think about it, you would sort of see the postal code there, which is actually a BC postal code, but in the province it says Alberta, and so it's giving us this sort of wonky result. So this would be a good, good example of where you should probably go back to your raw data, clean it up, go look for these stray postal codes here. Um, and then one of the nice things in Tableau is once you've done that, you go back to your Excel sheet, you fix it, you save it, you can just right click on the data source, click refresh, and everything will automatically be loaded in um, and corrected, okay? Um, you can actually have multiple filters in your data. So say what you want to do is to drill down not only by province, uh, but to drill down by postal code area. You can actually make by postal code a filter as well. Okay? And so the way that would work is we'd say, okay, let's click on Ontario, and then I'm really interested in this NOB postal code area. I click on that, and then these are the donors, not just in Ontario, but in the NOB postal code area. Right? So it really allows you to very quickly um, zoom in on the particular pieces of information you want, extract insight, and then go back to the full view. And when you're in Tableau Desktop um, and you sort of lose track of well, what, what, what have I filtered, you just hit the escape key. You can't see that on, on the screen, of course, but and it resets all the filters um, and you're back to seeing everything all at once. Okay? So this is great. You've made this cool chart. It's all pretty and color-coded. Uh, and you want to share it with some other people, right? So you've done the analysis in Tableau, but you really want to send this to your CEO. You want to send it to one of your uh, stakeholders so that you could, they can do some of this analysis themselves. You know, they may not understand it all about how to sort of make all the charts in Tableau, but they can certainly understand, you know, I click on something, I, I can drill down to the province, I can drill down to the postal code. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, the first thing, though, is my rule with Tableau visualizations is um, you have to remember that unless you tell people how it works, no one's going to know how it works, right? Like if you just imagine coming to this chart blind, you're not going to know that clicking on Ontario filters this postal code map down to Ontario, right? Um, you might even want to turn off the postal code filtering just to make it super clear. Um, and, and if anything, as you're sort of going through it and you click on things, if, every, if all of a sudden the whole chart changes, um, you might be kind of freaked out. You might be like, did I break something? Did I screw something up? So my rule of thumb is always to explain what we're doing. So you can give your dashboard a title here, show dashboard title and give it a, a, a title, something like look at our donors, and then just literally explain um, how people can interact with the chart. So you can sort of say click on a province to drill down, or click on a province to filter the other charts perhaps. Um, and I, this is just my own sort of little cab, um, rule of thumb, but whenever I'm asking people to do something, to, to, to do sort of an active thing, um, I often will highlight it in red just so it sort of pops out. I can make this a little bit smaller. Okay, um, and then you can even make it um, more clear. If you want to sort of say by postal code filtered by and then put the province in here, um, then as you click on a province, it'll actually say the province um, there in the headline, right? And you could do that for each one of, of these headers so, that's, so that it's crystal clear that when you click on a province um, that people are looking at the filtered view on each one of these charts. I'll just get rid of this for now though. Okay, so you're ready to share this chart. Um, there's a few different ways that you can do that. Uh, one is you can save uh, what's called a packaged workbook. So when you go to save your work in Tableau, uh, you're given uh, basically two options. So down here at the bottom you'll see one's called a Tableau workbook and the other is called a Tableau packaged workbook. Um, the, the best way I can think of to explain the difference between these is if you've ever done um, family movies on your home computer, uh, a Tableau workbook is kind of like a iMovie project file or a Windows Movie Maker project file. It contains sort of the instructions for how the chart was constructed in the same way that a, a iMovie file might can, contain the instructions for I want this clip to be 20 seconds and I want this title to say this, uh, but it doesn't contain the actual material that's needed to make the finished product, right? So, so an iMovie project file doesn't within it contain all the video files and the pictures that you need to make your, your workbook uh, or, or to make your, your movie. Uh, a Tableau workbook file does not contain the data. So the problem is if you say something is a Tableau workbook, Tableau workbook is great for when you're doing your own work. 
um, because you can just it's a, it's a small little file you can keep it on your computer. But if you send that to someone else, that Tableau workbook is going to say to whoever else opens it up in Tableau, okay, go look for that Excel file in Chad's desktop folder. On another computer, there will not be any Chad's desktop folder. You'll get an error message. It won't work. So when it comes time to share something in Tableau, what you almost always want to do is, is do what's called a Tableau packaged workbook. And what a Tableau packaged workbook does is it packages the data within the file so that when you send that to anyone, they can open it and they'll see exactly what it is that you want them to see. So we're going to say this is a Tableau package workbook. Uh, and We'll call this donor analysis. And we'll save it. Okay, and then if you look at my desktop, I've got this donor analysis TWBX file. Uh, that's a Tableau package workbook. Okay. So if someone had themselves has a, a Tableau desktop license, either the, the one they've spent $2,000 for or the discounted nonprofit one um, that um, you bought through TechSoup, uh, then if they go to open that package workbook, they're essentially going to see, you can just sort of see, I can just drag this to Tableau, they're going to see what you see. They're going to see um, all of the data, they're going to see the dashboard, and then they can, if they wish, uh, can make changes to it, they can edit it, and then they can save it again and send it off to somebody else. Okay. Um, but uh, you don't need to have a paid version of Tableau Desktop to be able to see um, what's in a package workbook. And I'll actually just show you here. You can also, if you're going to be sharing package workbooks, often if what you really want people to see is the dashboard, you don't want them to see how the sausage was made, you can actually highlight these tabs, right click, and hide them so they'll just see the dashboard here. And then you can open that in uh, a program called Tableau Reader. And Tableau Reader, much like Adobe Reader, is a, a program that allows you to open package workbook files but doesn't allow you to create them. And Tableau Reader, the nice thing about Tableau Reader is it's completely free. Uh, so anyone can go on uh, the Tableau Reader website, download it for either PCs or Macs, uh, and then they're able to open uh, any package workbook. And they, can, they can't edit the, the workbook file, they can't make their own data visualizations, but all of the interactivity that you've built into your dashboard will be available to them. So I'll just show you how this works. I click File Open. I go to my desktop, I open that package workbook file. Okay, and I have the full uh, data visualization here, and it's fully interactive. Right? I click on Ontario, I get the filtering down to Ontario, click on BC, get the filtering down to BC, all the tooltips work just the same way they did on my computer. Okay, so in a small organization, uh, Tableau Reader is a really great way to be able to have maybe just one or even two licenses of Tableau that you can then share. Uh, your analysis with anybody in your organization. All you have to do is create that package workbook file and then just put it on a SharePoint or uh, send it in an email and people can open it in Tableau Reader and get the full analysis uh, that way. Okay. Uh, there is also something called Tableau Server, which basically is for larger organizations. It allows you to post your data visualizations on a company intranet. Um, but Tableau Server is quite expensive. If you're the kind of person who is on this webinar because $2,000 is too expensive <laughs> for one ta Tableau desktop license, Tableau server is probably not going to be within your budget, um, but for smaller organizations, Tableau Reader is really a great sort of um, way to share your analysis because you can have one or two people doing the analysis and then sharing it with everyone else, sending those workbook files uh, around your organization. Uh, one thing I will mention about Tableau workbooks, because they're saving all of the data within the workbook, you obviously don't want to share those package workbooks um, with anyone who doesn't have a right to see all the information. So even though you're just visualizing um, things at an aggregate level here, people would have access to the underlying data. So Tableau uh, package workbooks are not a good idea if you're sending something to um, someone who doesn't have a right to see all of the data. Um, the other thing that you can do for sharing your data is let's say, and this wouldn't probably be the case for donor data like this because this is pro probably pretty proprietary, pretty sensitive, uh, but if you had data sort of that was on a broader level about the type of work your charity is doing, um, maybe like a map showing all the really cool projects that you're involved in all around the world, uh, and you want to share that with everybody, you want to put it on your website and sort of tell the story uh, of your organization, uh, you can do that too with something called Tableau Public. Uh, and Tableau Public is actually a completely free version of Tableau, and in fact if all you're doing is sharing your data publicly, you don't need to send things internally, you can actually download Tableau Public for free, and that's the software that I used when I was a, a data journalist at the Vancouver Sun. But even within the paid version of Tableau Desktop, you can create an account in Tableau Public, which is free, you just do it online, it takes two minutes. And then once you've done that, any visualization that you want to share with the world, you just click up to server, go to Tableau Public, and go save to Tableau Public. Now it sometimes will ask you to create this data extract, that's just a little formal process where Tableau needs to take the data from the spreadsheet and extract it into a special file, and then you can click on Tableau Public, save to Tableau Public, 
and you log into your Tableau public account. And there it is, it's online. And what's cool about Tableau Public is basically all of that interactive functionality uh, that you had in Tableau Desktop and then you had in Tableau Reader works within um, the user's browser. So they can go to this website and they can fully interact just like we were interacting before. There's a little bit more of a lag uh, because it has to go back to Tableau Public servers. Um, but you can then sort of share the story of your data um, with the broader public, um, both by sending people to this link or down here at the bottom where you see share. Uh, you can either get a specific link to the visualization or you can get an embed code and that embed code you can put into your blog, into your CMS, into your website uh, and, and then it'll just like appear if you're writing a blog post about all this great work you're doing in Africa and there's these great well projects that you're working on, put in a little visualization as people are reading the story they come across the visualization, they can click on little dots and hover over them, learn more about the, the work that your organization is doing and it's a really powerful way to sort of tell uh, your data story uh, to the rest of the world. Okay. Um, again, much like with Tableau, even more so than with Tableau Reader, uh, when you publish something to Tableau Public, uh, the underlying data, there are some ways to um, restrict it in some, in some cases, but it's not completely foolproof, foolproof. So again, you would not want to publish sensitive data to Tableau Public, even if um, you're only showing data at an aggregate level. You probably want to, if there's, if there's a, a good rule of thumb with Tableau Public is if there's fields in your data that are sensitive, you probably want to delete those fields before you import them delete those columns before you import them into Excel, okay? Okay, uh, <clears throat> Tableau's real power obviously is in its interactivity, but uh, this is the real world and I realize that sometimes um, you want to create visualizations not so that people can click on them online or click on them in Tableau Reader, but because you want to put them in an annual report uh, or you want to um, put them in a PowerPoint presentation or things like that. Uh, Tableau also makes it super easy uh, to share uh, your data in static format with other uh, program. So there's a couple ways to do that. From a dashboard or from an individual sheet, you just click on up here on dashboard or on worksheet and you can export an image. So this will take whatever is in the view right now. So we could we could filter it down. We could say actually I want to have a little visualization that focuses specifically on BC. I can click on dashboard. I can export an image. Let's say BC donors. And then we have a little P PNG file that we can put uh, on a blog. Um, in a report uh, that's just filtered down to uh, British Columbia donors. Um, you can even save yourself a step. You can click on dashboard, copy image, and then that just copies the image to uh, your clipboard and then right in your Word document or your PowerPoint file, you just paste the image right in. Uh, you can also, um, this is a little bit different in PCs um, than in Macs. In PCs, there's actually an option here under File that says Print to PDF in Macs. So some of you guys who are Mac heads might know. You first click Print, uh, and then you click Save as PDF, but you can save your reports uh, as a PDF. So um, And you can actually use, it's a bit of a, a hacky thing, but because within this custom sizing, uh, in addition to sort of options for laptop browsers and, and uh, desktop browsers, they actually also, you can format your dashboard to be the size of an 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Um, and what you can actually do, do with that, uh, which I've seen some people uh, make quite productive use of, is create, you know, maybe four or five dashboards. They're all 8.5 by 11s. They've got lots of different charts on it. You add some text into the headlines, all that kind of stuff. Uh, and then you can basically use it to create um, PDF reports, right? And say you want to do one report on BC, you filter for BC, click print, you got your five page report on BC, pull Quebec into filter, you got your five page report on Quebec, and you don't have to kind of reinvent the wheel each time. And as I mentioned with um, before about sort of when you realize mistakes in your data, at any point you can refresh your data. So this is helpful if you realize there's an error and you need to go back and fix it. It can also be really, really powerful in the sense that if you've got data that kind of comes out on an annual basis and you spend a lot of time building a lot of different visualizations, uh, when it comes time to do the next year's version, you don't have to start from scratch and do everything over again. You can just point Tableau to the new data source and as long as it's formatted in the exact same way, um, you're good to go, okay? Um, so that's sort of the basics of uh, Tableau. I can cover a few other things if there aren't a whole lot of questions, but I just wanted to leave you with sort of like, okay, that's great, what do I do next? Because <laughs> obviously, we haven't covered a whole lot of stuff. There's, there's all sorts of uh, cool functionality 
Uh, Tableau, uh, the most recent version, version 10, just came out last month that included new support for mobile devices, um, some new formatting, new fonts, all sorts of other cool stuff. Um, in terms of learning more about uh, Tableau, there's a few different options. Um, Tableau itself, itself has pretty good um, training videos. If you go Tableau training, you'll see their free online videos. Um, so if you're the kind of person that learns at your own pace and you're okay with that, um, this is a great resource. Uh, Lynda.com, if you have access to that, has some pretty good Tableau um, resources. Um, and of course, I'm biased, but as I mentioned, I do my own um, training. I've got one coming up if you're in the Vancouver area, September 24th and 25th at SFU Harbor Center, there's still a few tickets available. Um, and if you are interested in learning about future training, if on the bottom of my training page, you can just put in your name and email, and I'll let you know uh, when the next training uh, is scheduled. Um, yeah, so I, I've got other things I can show you guys if there aren't more questions, but I thought I would sort of open it up now uh, for questions, because I think we're at the 45 minute mark, and I'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have uh, about Tableau or how you can use it in your uh, nonprofit organization, and I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much, Chad. That was very helpful. Uh, and we do um, we do have quite a few questions, so we're going to jump right into them. So the first question uh, that we have is uh, from Joyce, and she asks, "What's the difference between Tableau Desktop and Tableau Online?" Good question. So um, I mentioned briefly uh, Tableau Server. So essentially what Tableau Server is, if you saw what I showed you there with Tableau Public, which is sort of when you want to post a visualization to the web for the whole world to, to, to see, uh, Tableau Server is basically almost exactly like that, but it's for an organization's internet. So you would build uh, essentially a version of Tableau Public that's just for your organization, and people would have to log in and have passwords and stuff like that. Um, and Tableau Online is basically like Tableau Server, but for smaller organizations. So instead of having to actually install Tableau on your own server, you would pay for Tableau Online. And I, I remember now, I, I want to say it's $500 a user per year, um, and then each user would have a login, but it would all be hosted in the cloud. And, and that's, that can be helpful for, I would say, sort of mid-sized organizations. I've, I've had some clients that have, that have used Tableau Online, where basically you want to share data in a live way with you know, five or six of your partner organizations, and you don't want to constantly be sending them these package workbooks. It sort of allows them to just log in, and they see the most recent version posted. Uh, in their browser, but it's it's sort of password protected, so it's not open to the whole world. It's just open to the people that you specify. But the thing with Tableau Server and Tableau Online is once you get past two, three, four users, it, it does start to get pretty expensive. We're talking sort of thousands of dollars. Right. So it's more for, uh, um, yeah, if you have multiple users, it just kind of becomes self-defeating. Um, so the next question is from Afia. And she asks, can I back up my Tableau data on my own server? So in other words, instead of backing up my data on Tableau's online server. Um, well, again, it depends on, on how you're set up. Like, so so I'm, I'm not the biggest expert in the Tableau server side. I know how it works, but I, I, most of my consulting is on the desktop side. I, I do know within Tableau server, again, if you have that full install and you've paid for that, uh, you can actually store your data in Tableau server kind of separate from your workbooks. And so you would kind of build a workbook that connects to an online data source. And there's more advanced stuff where you know the, the data set in Tableau Server can automatically be refreshed uh, from a, another database and things like that. Um, but if what you're doing is if, if all you have is a regular desktop license, then basically the files that you're working with would have to be on your own uh, computer or like a network drive or something like that that you can access. Okay. Next question is from Michael, and he's asking, can a FileMaker database be used as a data source with Tableau? FileMaker. Good question. Hold on a sec here. FileMaker. I don't see FileMaker there. I think the answer might be no. Clean <laughs> <laughs> <You know. laughs> Sorry, FileMaker Michael. FileMaker is like the Mac, the Mac uh, access, right? But I don't actually see. Well, maybe maybe it's under files though, because it would be a file. Excel stat files. No, sorry. <laughs> so a tentative no. <laughs> um, and the next one from Barry, um, and he asks, can the names be removed from the top donor chart? I guess in an effort to help uh, keep some uh, confidentiality. So, so show the top donors, but not have the names involved. Oh, I see, I see, I see. Okay, uh, just one second here. Um, well, you could, you could, uh, we, we didn't really cover this, but you can sort of do, um, what's called a calculated field. 
Now, you know what, in terms of individual donors, you, what you would need to do is you'd need to sort of probably create something in your original data set or, or through what's called a calculated field in um, Tableau that gave sort of each donor their own ID code or something like that, and then, and then what you would have here would be uh, an ID code instead of the full name. The problem is you could, you could just sort of create something that says anonymous, but then it's going to lump them all together because what it's doing here is it's going through the data and every donation that's from Kathy Mindicanu, it's lumping together to give you this, this global number of 380,000. But so you would need to sort of in the data set itself create uh, a unique ID code for each, for each donor. Right. So just another, another column to replace the name. Yeah, to line it yeah. up. You know. Or, I mean, the other way to do it is if, is if I mean, in a way, like if you're going to be an, anonymizing the donors, then maybe having them as donor one, two, three doesn't help you that much. If what you're really wanting to go know is just this other stuff, the other way to do it would be before you import it into Tableau, just uh, delete the full name column, delete the first name column, delete the last name column, and their email address. And then you can still do all of the analysis you were doing before on province and postal code and date. You just won't have their their name and the data. And then again, that would that would maybe be safer if you're going to be sharing it with people that you know it's okay for them to know the overall patterns of your donors, but you don't want them to know the names of your donors. Nice. Yeah. Good workaround. Uh, next question from, is from Duncan, and he asks, is Tableau able to analyze data across multiple sheets in an Excel work so, for example, uh, 10 years of member records on 10 separate sheets. Yes. <laughs> this is actually one of the newer features that Tableau has, which has made my life a lot easier. So, um, I, I, from a journalist perspective, I'm often dealing with these horrible uh, CSV files where basically it's like data on crime, but you have one CSV for one year and one CSV for the next year and one CSV for the next year. Uh, Tableau has something actually, and I can probably show it to you here, uh, called a union. And what a union does is it takes data exactly like that, either in multiple sheets or multiple files. Um, and as long as it's in the same format, it just uh, stitches them all together into one data set, and you can use it as one data set. Uh, the other thing you can do, which again is, is sort of more advanced than I had time to, to deal with, is that if you've got data that you want to join together, uh, you can pull two data sets into Tableau and join them. So like if you had sort of one data set that had um, a certain code that's used in your organization, and then another data set that explains, oh, that code is the person came in for a food basket, and that code means that and join them together. So again, you can kind of analyze them as one, even though the data is sort of split across different data sources. And, and you can join things that are even in different data uh, formats. So you can join an Excel file with a Microsoft Access uh, or, or a CSV file with an, an Oracle database, just not FileMaker Pro, apparently. <laughs> yeah. So essentially, as long as you're able to make, you know, you might have to go into each uh, data sheet and make sure that the columns are lining up. But as long as that's set, then you're good to go. Yeah, and even if, even if they don't line up perfectly, like sometimes you'll have a situation where, um, you know, in, in one in one data set something's called a province, and the other one it's called a PR or something like that. Uh, you can just manually, like if, if the fields are called the same thing, Tableau will automatically just assume they should be linked and make it easy. But if they're called something slightly different, you can just manually go into the join and say province is the same as PR, and it'll join them together. So it's 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 pretty it's pretty seamless. Nice. It's very yeah. It's very streamlined. Um, next question from uh, Janice. She asks, what are some common pitfalls that new users often fall into? Um, so I think the biggest one, um, and I can actually maybe already on time, I'll, I'm going to quickly show this to you. So um, this is an issue that's, that's sort of referred to as sort of the difference between um, database layout and spreadsheet layout. So often you're dealing with data like, like this. Whereas this, is, this is median donations by province. This is data from Stats Canada. And so you can sort of see for each year, Right, Newfoundland, Labrador, 97, 98, 99. And, and I'm assuming some of your viewers have probably seen data like this, where the years are sort of in multiple columns. The problem is if you try to analyze this data uh, in Tableau, you kind of look at it and it's sort of like, what the, how am I going to do this, right? Because <laughs> like, I have all these different measures for each individual year. I don't really have a year dimension that I can quickly pull over into columns. And this is one of the most typical problems people have in Tableau, because they have data that's formatted like this in what's called spreadsheet layout, and they really want to have data in what's called database layout, which is sort of more skinny. Um, and this used to be a huge problem in Tableau, but as of about a year ago, Tableau built some of this data manipulation right into the product. So what we can do really easily is I just click on 97, and I click on the last year, 2014. Whoop, sorry. On the last year, 2014. All right, I gotta move this over, I got my and I just click on pivot. And what that does is it reshapes my data. So now instead of having the years all the way across as columns. I've got a new column that identifies the year and a new column that identifies the donation. And then I just rename this year, and I rename this median donation, 
Uh, and then I've got a much cleaner interface for doing an analysis, and it's very easy for me just to pull the year over to columns, median donation over to row, province over to color, make a nice little line chart that shows um, you know, which provinces are donating the most money. So, so a lot of that kind of data manipulation, which used to be a huge hassle in Tableau, is now a lot easier. The other thing that Tableau has now is called uh, a data interpreter. So if you've got some one of these weird, I can show you this to you quickly too. Um, Sometimes you'll be dealing with spreadsheets that look like this, which are kind of like a dog's breakfast, where you have these sort of like cells that go all the way across, and then this cell goes across these cells. Uh, and if you tried to open it in um, Tableau, uh, Tableau is confused, right? Because it doesn't have the headers in, in, the, in the top, and so it doesn't know how to identify this data. Tableau has this cool little thing called Data Interpreter, which is based on a bunch of machine logic sort of interpret weird spreadsheets. You just click on that, and almost like magic, it identifies uh, the data properly and you can start doing the analysis on it. So Tableau's gotten a lot more powerful on the data um, analysis and data reshaping end of things where it used to be uh, a real headache. Now you can do a lot of that stuff right from this data window. Beautiful, which makes it a lot more user friendly. Yeah, yeah. I, I used to often joke that in teaching things in Tableau, I'm kind of lying to people because I'm using this nice clean data set so that don't have any problems in it, whereas in the real world obviously you're not dealing with that. You're dealing with messy, misshapen data. Um, but Tableau has made made life a lot more easy for people in terms of getting their data into a format that Tableau can actually start to do analysis. Nice, nice. And the next uh, question is from Gurpreet. He asks, can we integrate Tableau to our website directly? So in other words, can you embed a packaged Tableau workbook file on a, on a certain web page on your website? Um, so if it's something that, that should be shared with the public, and that's what Tableau Public is for, like you like you just publish it to Tableau Public and you get an embed code and you throw the embed code uh, into Tableau. If it's something that's more private, like it's something on an intranet, then again, that's where something like Tableau Server would be the better approach, but could be quite expensive. Um, you can, of course, if you've got like a shared network folder or something like that, you can just have a link to the Tableau workbook that people can download and open in Tableau Reader. Um, but if it is something that you, that you want to share publicly, then Tableau Public is really the perfect solution for that. And one of the nice things about Tableau Public, A, it's completely free. And because you're using Tableau servers, um, if somehow your, which would be amazing, obviously, if your little chart of African well projects goes viral and gets 100,000 hits, Tableau Public can handle that. Like, it can keep on serving up more and more versions of your chart. Um, so you don't have to sort of worry about sort of maintaining your own servers to serve up the charts. But if you don't have, if it's something you want to share internally, you probably have to be sharing the individual files that people would download and then open Tableau Reader. Gotcha, gotcha. And next question is from Anne. And she asks, can you create horizontal bar graphs with each bar presenting multiple donors? So in other words, bar is Ontario, and then broken down by no, uh, donations by postal code within that bar. Oh, like the, the bar being in different segments? Is that what you mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. A segmented bar, maybe through color coding or whatnot. I think you can pull, if you pull postal code over into details, no, that didn't work. You could, you could theoretically do that. Like if I pull province off of here and I pull postal code into colors, see if that works. Yes. So it's theoretically possible. I don't, I don't know how useful this would be <laughs> as a visualization, but, but it's, it's possible. I mean, essentially, you can basically do almost anything in Tableau. Like there's actually a lot of people that will take visualizations that are made by the New York Times and Washington Post and rebuild them in Tableau. It's just that you get kind of, um, further off on the complexity thing, things become a little bit more difficult. But I, mean, I mentioned the, the, the training videos and stuff for Tableau, and obviously I, I recommend coming to my training workshop, but um, th there's also a huge community of Tableau users. So, so if you're trying to figure out how to do something, um, you can almost always find someone who's done a blog about it, done a YouTube video about it. Um, and so as you sort of get more and more advanced in Tableau, there's a lot of resources out there that can sort of help you figure out how to do the specific thing that you're wanting to do. Like there's some good, there's some good tutorials online about what are called divergent stacked bar charts. So Instead of just having a stacked bar chart with Likert scale uh, results, it kind of is tilted in a certain way that makes it easier to read. Uh, and it's a little bit complicated, but you can find sort of step-by-step -step tutorials for how to do that online because Tableau has this kind of amazing uh, community that's been built up. Yeah, and those tutorials are great for just kind of hand-holding and guiding you through the process. Yeah. Um, and from our last question, um, perfect timing, from Radhika, and she asks, can I embed, so we talked about embedding uh, uh, Tableau worksheets, but can she uh, embed them in a .NET development environment? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's bad to end on a question that I don't know the answer to. I mean, essentially, Tableau's embed codes should be able to work on any website, right? Like, like whether you're talking about a WordPress website, 
Blogger website, um, Drupal, things like that. I mean, I, they're used sort of all over the world on all sorts of different platforms. So, so my tentative answer would be yes. Uh, I've occasionally run into CMSs, and actually, we did when I was at the Vancouver Sun, I had this problem for a while where uh, it doesn't like Tableau's specific web uh, embed code. But even in that case, if you, again, if you search online, there's a there's a workaround where you can instead of using Tableau's own embed code, you can use a simple iframe. Um, and so, if for some reason your CMS doesn't like the JavaScript. Um, in Tableau's embed code, uh, you can use the iframe, and iframes basically are supported by almost every platform I'm aware of, so it should be good to go. Nice. So you can experiment with that, Radhika. <laughs> um, and thank you uh, so much, everyone. That's all the time we have for today. Um, and thank you again, Chad, for teaching us about data visualization. It was a great presentation. I think it was a lot to take away and a lot to think about. Um, and thank you all for taking the, uh, this hour to join us. I want to remind you that this webinar recording will be posted on a website um, within the week, and the webinar um, um, and other information will we'll also be um, emailing out to you. Um, please do fill out this brief uh, post-webinar survey that's going to launch right after the session uh, closes. Um, if you have any additional questions or any, uh, anything that we weren't able to get today, you can uh, contact uh, us through that form. Um, and that's it. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks, everybody.